Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Widget Ridge. It's for two players, and it is a game in which you're going to be building a deck of cards that is going to associate you to build widgets into things. Once you build a thing, you're going to be able to utilize that thing's ability every single turn, and it'll give you certain abilities, whether it's an and or an and and, and those things are going to allow you to get sparks. And why is sparks important? Well, that's how you win the game. Once you get 100 of those sparks, you're going to win, and you're going to need, in order to get those sparks, to buy more cards. And there's going to be a currency in the game that you can utilize. Some cards you can simply play for their abilities, others you can play for their abilities and attach them to create your different widgets and things. And as you combine them, there's going to be certain things like attachment bonuses or playing bonuses that will allow you to buy more cards. It's a back and forth game of two player logic, deduction, and strategy as to how your opponents are going to be making their things and how you're going to go about constructing the best thing you possibly can without your opponents destroying it. And if you can do that and get 100 sparks, you win. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the game and everything included in Widget Ridge. So here we have Widget Ridge and everything included for two players. And it's a two player game. Each player is going to get their own starting spark tracker along with the starting spark tracker attachment, which will let you start at zero spark. And you're also gonna get your own player deck. There are all 10 cards included with each deck and each player gets the same deck, but you're gonna shuffle them and of course draw five like normal deck builders in which you're gonna be drawing five, playing five, and then drawing back to your hand size of five. You're also gonna get a deck of cards, which is the Widget Ridge deck and you're going to deal out six of them into a tableau so that players can then take them as they buy them and put them into their discard pile which the pile which then they can utilize when they draw them next to play to get more benefits usually these benefits are going to be either currency to buy more widgets or it's going to be spark to gain the victory points to win the game 100 spark is what it takes to win and these trackers here are what it's going to uh, utilize as far as the which victory points go because it's going to be spinning around which i'll show you down below but otherwise it's pretty much what you get in the game uh each player's got their deck their tokens or their their uh, spark trackers the little player reference card for two players and the deck of cards along with the rule book and of course what ash is holding over there the little player box all right let me show what's in the game and how to play a couple rounds so here you have furious tree great games widget ridge all set up for two players right now here's the rule book of the game and the two players starting setups each player is going to get their deck of cards they have their little uh, widget tracker or spark tracker which is going to start at zero a zero and a zero for both players and as you increase in points it's pretty simple you're going to move this little tracker up one two three four all the way to nine then you're going to move it down here which is going to be 10 and then you're going, to see, you're going to see 20 and 30 and 40 and so on and so forth and you can use this to manipulate it for how many spark you're going to have in the game each player is going to take their five cards in hand to start the game off with in a 10 card deck and then they're simply going to begin now let me go ahead and give everybody their hand size i'll move these up just a little bit so there's some player space which will allow players to place in front of them and we'll start with this player here most of the cards that you're going to start with are the basic widgets these guys are not able to be used as for making a uh, gadget or whatever you want to call it so you're just going to be utilizing these for the currency that they have on them or if they have any spark and in this case he simply has five currency these are going to represent the currency in the game he has five so he can buy pretty much anything he wants here uh five five three four five and three is the cost of any of these guys he wants there is a play ability which is going to have that little play symbol there and there's an attachment ability whenever uh he this attaches to anything whether it be one or two this ability is going to trigger off and it could trigger off more than once and it'll do something special whether it may making players lose spark, gain spark, gaining currency, and so on and so forth. They're very, very simple as to how they work. The bottom area here is a full construct. Once you've built all three of your uh, constructed widgets together, it becomes one of these little gadgets in which you're going to be able to do certain things. Now, there's different types of uh, the uh, inventions here. You're going to have augments, and you're going to have... Uh, the devices and then you're going to have accessories the ones that have two attachments here are the middle and that's the one you have to play first and the ones that are on the sides like this one here is an augment it'll have to be played on the left side and the accessory on the far right side like this one over here and of course they all must be connected in order to play them but let's go ahead and simply start to buy some stuff here so he'll go ahead and buy this one here and he's going to go ahead and put it in his discard pile this one is a um a device which is going to allow them to play this down when he wants it has a connection that says whenever a player any player with the most spark uh, other than you it will lose five sparks so that's a way to make people lose victory points goes in their discard pile then all of these will also trigger to the discard pile in which case that player is going to then draw his hand of five cards back again whenever you need to draw and if you don't have a deck you're going to simply draw uh, shuffle this discard pile and then draw up the one of these is going to be moving over to the side and a new card is going to come up and now it's the next player's turn and he has four one two three and four different currency so he's going to go ahead and also add the spark here which is one two and three 
and he's gonna move his little tracker up to three spark. He's uh, 3% <laughs> of the way to winning. Now he's got four, so he can buy any of these guys here he wants. He'll go ahead and pick up this device over here, and he's gonna put it in his discard pile, and then he's gonna discard the rest of these cards and draw his five cards again. And then the game's just gonna keep going just like that, flipping over another one and playing as you see. Let's go ahead and show you how this kind of works. So if he had, if somebody had a hand that was more like this, one, two, three, four, and five, and this was his deck of cards. Let's go ahead and deal out some more of these cards here, just like that. And this was his hand of five cards. He could play these out for their playabilities. So he's just going to play them out just like this. He was going to gain his currency, his sparks. He's going to gain uh, a connection bonus whenever this connects to something. And this, as you can see, is a device. So he'll play this device out. And uh, on, on the opposite side, he's going to have these here. And none of these actually do anything as far as play goes, except for this. This would actually give him his three spark. And then he have three money, so he have five money. He go ahead and purchase something like this. He put it into his discard pile, and then he can go ahead and start doing some attachments. So in this case, he's got his device already out, and he's got an augment. And if it connects like this, it does. It has a connection. It only needs one connection, so this doesn't have to be connected as long as there's just one connection. It connects, and then the connection bonus is gained. And this one says he's going to gain four sparks. So it will move up to seven spark on his victory tracker here. And these guys are going to stay here, whereas these ones here are all going to go. If you can't connect a piece or you don't want to, it goes. And let's say you want to switch a uh, device up, you could. You can simply switch this with this, and this would give you a connection bonus to let you draw a card. But if not, it would just go discard pile. He would then draw up his next five cards and continue the game. And that's basically how it works. Uh, you remember, you have your augment, your device, and then your accessory on the side. The last thing you need to know about this game is if you played these two out previously on a previous turn and then you drew this card, let's say you just had that card in your hand on the next turn, you are going to be able to place this down that will then connect, and now it's going to give you a full invention. So at the end of your turn, along with at the begin, uh, during your turn, you'll be able to gain any bonuses, whether it be connection bonus for connecting this, or whether it be a play bonus for playing this card, you can then do the abilities down below. And it's going to be a, you may pay three spark, and if you do, you draw a card, or each opponent with more spark than you loses seven spark. You could choose to do either of those actions every single turn, unless somebody plays a card to remove your uh, invention. And when you remove a piece, probably gonna wanna remove the middle, all of these guys are going to go. So if this player removed this device's middle core, uh, then he's going to lose that, goes to his discard pile. The other thing too, is when you melt things, you're gonna be melting things from your discard pile, from in front of you, or from your hand. And that basically removes it from the game. It's a way to thin out your deck, or to mess your opponent up in certain ways. Uh, and that's pretty much how the game goes, is a bunch of different devices and a bunch of different augments and accessories that are going to be changing the game, giving you different types of things. So we can go ahead and show you how it kind of looks if I had this one attached, which actually works just fine because it has this attachment in this one. This is called a battery-powered uh, <laughs> Vel Velocitron on wheels. And uh, it would give you these instant play bonuses when you played them, and of course the connection bonus when it connects to these two, and then you would get this bonus here at the very bottom. So you're always gonna be making new contraptions, but you're only ever gonna have one out total on the field. You won't have any more additional out. If you wanted to change it up, like you had this one in your hand, you could simply place this here and remove this one, but it has to connect. And in this case, it doesn't connect. There's no connection here, so that will not work. But otherwise, that's pretty much how you play the game. You're gonna push along until you get to 100 victory points or more, the player who hits that 100 victory player mark in Widget Ridge is going to win the game. Pretty cool little deck builder, pretty simple. Let's come up and talk about it. All right, so caveats for the game, Widget Ridge. And as I was saying previously, you cannot use your entire invention unless you have all three pieces connected, the augment, the device, and the accessory. Once you do, at the end of your turn, you can choose to activate it. And then there's going to be a choose this option or this option based on what your invention is. And you can utilize that every turn, which which is gonna be definitely something you wanna do. It's something you're gonna strive for throughout the game, and it's very, very important that you get that down. Also, remember that you can melt things. When you melt them, they're gonna get removed from the game. They're basically like cleaning up your deck of cards and choosing which ones you wanna keep, which ones you don't. Usually when you melt cards, you're gonna get some kind of bonus because you're getting rid of cards from your deck that you probably paid for or cards that you started with. Nevertheless, that is the basic idea of the game. There's a deck builder in itself with the unique aspect of placing cards down into your tableau to create inventions that give you bonuses throughout the game. It plays very quick. It's very simple, and once you score your 100 points, that's it. You're done. Winner, and you can play again. 
What do I think about the game? Well, first of all, I really enjoy this game because it's very, very quick and simple, and it's a game that if you're only got one other player, it's a nice tactical game of head on head on head, uh, head to head, <laughs> play play through. You're just going, I'm gonna play this, this, this. Okay, now it's your turn. Go, 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 and then you go, and you can keep going back and forth, making new and interesting widgets. There's some funny little aspects to the game as far as the different types of inventions you can make based on what they say. A battery operated Velocitron on wheels is pretty funny considering a Velocitron has wings. But, I mean, you could give it wheels, I don't know why you would. During the live stream last night, we were playing the game and explaining uh, what you would use these devices for. People came up with a bunch of crazy little uh, different things you would use certain things for, like a, a breastplate that has an antenna that's also electric powered. Why would you use that? Maybe a radio, I don't know. But it was fun and enjoyable. And uh, there is that little conflict that goes back in through the game. And it's rather quick. So those of you who like deck builders, it reminds me of Volfurion in a way, but instead of going and utilizing your deck to, to use this monster to move around and destroy people's uh, cities or have your own cities be protected. You're simply building these widgets, which reminds me of like that 1851 Express game in which you're building your different contraptions. And it has that kind of mixed into it as well. It's a review I did previously, if you understand what I'm talking about. But it's super fun. It's really enjoyable. If you like deck builders and you like and you want a game that's going to be for simply two players, you're going to dig this. If you want more players, obviously this is not going to be a game for you. If you want a thicker, more uh, in-depth deck builder, probably not as well. This game comes with just a specific deck of cards you're going to be utilizing that you're going to get. There is a ton of different contraptions that you can make. I mean, I'm guessing there's hundreds of different uh, types of devices that you could put together, which is cool. But in essence, the game is very simple. You're going to be switching augments and accessories onto your device, moving them around, connection bonuses, play bonuses, changing your ability at the end of your turn, and then passing and the play is going to go on and on. There is a cool little landslide that happens mid-game in which you start off with getting a couple things here and there and it slowly starts progressing and it quickly speeds up. And if you're playing really well, you can surpass your opponent so they have to be very, very careful. Really, Realistically, I would suggest if you're losing this game to start to start re removing your opponent's accessories and whatnot, putting them back in the discard pile, of making them avoid getting those bonus sparks that they're going to get for having an invention. If they have an invention and you don't, you're in some deep duties so be aware of that experienced deck builders are going to really enjoy this game i think the artwork is very very impressive it has that steampunk feel to it and there's quite a lot of different artwork in the game you can go ahead and check it out i'll probably post it up here so you can see the different types of artwork in the game but it is very very nice and they have all different colors there's a ton of different types there's a couple of the same uh pieces maybe two of each different type in in the deck here but there's definitely enough to make you feel like you have a variety of stuff overall it's a game i think you're going to enjoy if you got that Deck Builder uh, Envy or Deck Builder Interest, I would check it out down below in the description. It's currently on Kickstarter. It's doing pretty well. And if you're interested in seeing a gameplay live, we did that yesterday, Wednesday, uh, the 27th or something like that, on our Facebook page to see how the game functions. Of course, we were going crazy during that video, but you'll get a good idea of how it's played nonetheless or on the Kickstarter page itself. All right, guys, that's what I got for you this time. Outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, it says my name right now on the channel, but it will be back to Unfiltered Gamer. A mess up on my part, and YouTube takes a little bit of time. Ash approves of Widget Ridge, a cool little crazy deck builder for steampunk building. I think you guys will dig it as well. And also, don't forget to check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and we're giving away the game Dogs right now. I hope you guys had a great time. I am very appreciative. You guys can check out my videos. Please push that little notification button there at the top. It will inform you when we create more videos. And also check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, two great sites to give tons of great stuff away, even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, thank you, Ash, for your help. Hi. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.